Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. Up to now, we've been focusing on the c -sharp syntax itself, as well as some select utility classes from the .NET Framework class library. Uh, we looked at other matters related to compilation of source code into assemblies, looked at the .NET Framework runtime, and what happens at runtime, and so on. However, I'm sure that at this point, you're now getting ready to and itchy to build real applications. So uh, applications that have interfaces, whether it be web-based applications or Windows-based applications. So in this final video in this fundamental series, we're gonna be discussing event-driven programming. So up to this point in our simple console window applications, there's really only been one event that occurs, the application startup event, which in turn triggers the static void main where we wrote the majority of our code. However, in a modern user interface, whether it be a native Windows application or a web-based application, users can interact. They can hover, they can press, they can type into, they can drag and drop the various elements that they see on screen in the graphical user interface. So as a software developer, you can write code that interacts with these events as they happen. In other words, how will your application respond and react when your user clicks on a given button that they see on, on the web page or on a form in a Windows application? Well, you, the developer, you get to decide that by writing code that handles that event. And every little uh, control, whether it be a text box or a button or a drop-down list box or a, a grid or whatever the case might be, has different uh, events that you can write code to handle. And we'll show more about that in just a moment. So how does this manifest itself in the applications that you'll write? Well, in this video, I'll demonstrate how you get the same experience of working with events, whether you write a Windows application or a web application. Uh, so what I want to do is start with a new project and the first type of application we're going to build is a WPF application. WPF stands for Windows Presentation Foundation. So let me type first of all WPF events. Now if you're not familiar with the Windows Presentation Foundation or WPF, it's part of the .NET Framework class library that allows you to create native Windows applications as opposed to web-based applications. In the new project dialog, there's also a template you may have seen called Windows Forms, uh, but that's frankly an older technology, uh, an older part of the class library. It's still viable. It's still used by many uh, programs and many companies that build software, but honestly, most of the buzz nowadays surrounds WPF, not Windows Forms. However, the things I'm going to tell you right now and show you with a WPF application, most of them will still apply to Windows Forms as well. Okay, uh, So what I want to do first of all is I'm going to double click this area that says main window. I'm not going to double click inside of the inner box, but kind of in this small outer edge that says main window. When I do that, notice that a new window pops open and I get a private void window loaded. So what this code will do is fire, will execute whenever this application loads up this main window for the first time. So we can already see that there is a difference between two files. The file that defines our form, the visual aspect of our application, and the code that defines the activity or the action that happens, the events that are fired can be handled inside for this particular event, the loaded event for the window will be handled here in this code block. Okay. Furthermore, if we take a look at the main window.xaml, XAML is an XML type syntax that defines uh, where various items are positioned within our Windows Presentation Foundation application. So here we have a window object, and you can see when we double clicked, it automatically created an attribute called loaded. And loaded will point to a block of code named window underscore loaded. All right, so that is one way 
that we can create an event handler by merely double clicking on an item, in this case just the window itself, it will create an event handler and it will wire up the two together so that when the window loads, it will look into our mainwindow.xaml.cs file for the definition of the event handler that we wrote behind that. We can ignore this. We don't have to write anything if we don't want to. So nothing will happen, but we can still handle that event if we if we care to. Now let's go ahead and go to the toolbox. I'm going to pin down the toolbox because we might use it a couple times here. And I'm going to put a text block, which is like a label. And then I'm going to put a button below it. And I'm going to, I could double click this button to create a button underscore click event. However, I'm gonna, this time with the button selected, I'm gonna go to the events tab in our properties pane. We haven't used up to this point. And I'm gonna just use the scroll bar to scroll up and down and to see all of the many different events that the .NET Framework runtime will pass to our code and we can either ignore all these events. Right now, we're ignoring every single one of them. Or if we wanted to, right, so now when we run the application, the click event for this button, all I have to do is just double and I click, click on the button. That code that handles the click event fires and allows me to then change the value of the text block control. Okay, so we've looked at two ways to define an event handler. We can double click on an item. You can see I can even double click on it now and it will take me to the code block where this uh, the click event is defined. Or I can select the event here in the properties window and just double click it. There's a third way as well. Let's do this. I'm gonna add one more button. And then I'm gonna go back to our main window.xaml.cs and I'm gonna type in the following code. I know its name is button2.click, which is the event name. You can see in IntelliSense that it has a little lightning bolt next to it. And then I'm going to plus equal. You can see a little, a, uh, a little message uh, pops up to say press tab to insert. And I'm going to hit tab twice on the keyboard in rapid succession. Tab, tab. All right, and that did two things for me. First of all, it created a new routed event handler. And when we get into talking about uh, WPF in another series, you'll learn what a routed event handler is. But for now, just accept the fact that we're creating an event handler to handle the click event. And we're gonna give it the name of the new button to click event. Now it created that method stub for us and even gave us a simple implementation and a reminder so that if uh, we did try to roll this product out and give it to somebody else, hopefully by testing our product, we'll see this little exception pop up. But we could do something like this, text block dot text equals hi from button two. Let's run the application. We'll click the second button and it will say hi from button two. And so what I really want you to take away from that, from this is that there's three ways to wire up event handlers to uh, some event that occurs on a form element, whether it be the window itself or a button or something else. Uh, and that is uh, through double clicking the item by finding it in the events window or by writing the code by hand to wire up the event handler. Now, truth be told, two of those methods are simply just setting an attribute, whoops, an attribute of that given element. Click equals button one click. That's what wires up our button one click event. This is what wires up our button two click event. Okay, so now that we've done this in WPF, let me go and save that. I happen to have installed on my computer Microsoft Visual Web Developer 2010 Express. Let's see how this works with ASP.NET applications. So I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to make sure to select Visual C Sharp Web ASP.NET Web Application. I'm going to call this um, ASP.NET Events. Click OK. 
I'll go through this a little bit faster, but I just want to impress upon you that when you understand that basic notion that uh, things have events and that you can write code for those events, each thing, whether it be a form or a button or a text box, have different events that you can handle and you can write code behind every single one of them or just a subset of those events. All right, so let's take a look at the design tab. And here I'm gonna just go to the bottom and I'm going to place a label by dragging and dropping it from the toolbox onto the designer surface and then drag and drop a button. And here I have a couple of options. I can double click the button to create the button one click event in our, here's our, the file that defines the uh, graphical user interface through the use of HTML and some special syntax as well. And we'll talk about that in a separate uh, video series, fundamental series. By double clicking that button, the IDE creates a method stub for us called protected void button one underscore click. If we were to look at the source code, you can see that it has an on click equals button one click. That's what wires up the button. Here I can type label one dot text equals hello world. Save this and then run our application. I can click on our button and it changes the label to hello world. Let me add a second button. I can go to the properties window when selecting that button down to the events tab and I can double click on the click event. And I could do something like label one dot text equals hello from button two. And then I can also, let's add one more button. And this time I'm gonna go to the page load event, which is kind of like the window loaded event that we saw in the WPF application, same idea here. This time I'm gonna go button three dot click plus equal tab tab. This time it creates a new event handler Passing in the name button three click, it go it generates the method stub for the button click event. Here I'm gonna comment out the not implemented exception and label one dot text equals hi from button three. And as you can see it works, so great. So it's as easy as that, whether you're interested in building a web form or Windows form applications. At this point, it just becomes a matter of learning the different controls that are available for each and learning the different events that are raised by those controls. What's the behavior of those controls that I, as a programmer, can write code to handle? In my experience, about 75% of events are common across those controls. In most cases, you can anticipate the events that'll be available without having to memorize a list or anything like that. So here's what I recommend. Whenever you need a particular control in your application, simply peruse the names of the events for that control. If you find one that you're not sure what it does, just cl uh, click on it and either look at its description if there is a description area below the uh, properties window, uh, or uh, you can look it up online. Sometimes the message associated with a given event could be a little bit cryptic uh, in the help. So usually that means uh, to me that I need to get a more comprehensive understanding of a particular concept as a whole, like data binding or the life cycle of a form or a web page or the purpose of a given control, some big picture idea. And once I have that in place, the individual events will make a, a lot more sense and I rely on MSDN, searching in MSDN, a lot during this process. All right, so I'll have a few more closing remarks in the next video, and but we're just about done. Thank you, we'll see you then.